you know, for all the benefits that real estate has, appreciation, appreciation, you can borrow money to buy it. It's one of the few investments you can do that. And then they move somebody in to pay down your basis. And it's a beautiful business if it just were for the tenants until it's a trash. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. So thankful to have this opportunity to bring my good friend Scott Myers right out of the green room and right here to front and center stage. So welcome, Scott. Hi, Jay, and hello, everyone. Good to see you, Jay. So, Scott, before we dive in, if you would take a moment and share with folks your background and uh, how you got into this self-storage thing, your story, and why and how are you qualified to talk about self-storage? Sure, sure. So um, I think like most folks, I got into uh, real estate, uh, starting with single family houses. I, I bought the, the Carlton Sheets home study system, um, God rest his soul now. And uh, that was uh, my first uh, foray into real estate. I uh, bought a house, rehabbed it, uh, rented it out, refinanced it then after we had a renter in it and enjoyed about uh, somewhere around $175 to $200 a, a month in positive cash flow. Three bedroom, one bath, uh, working back working class house in a working class neighborhood, just like uh, Carlton had mentioned. And then we continued to replicate that. And uh, then we bought two and then we bought um, four and then we continued on. And we had not a sizable portfolio, but we had about 80 houses. And then, but realized that uh, there was still a lot of work. Every time those uh, went vacant, we had to uh, re-rent them. We were chasing tenants for cash. And just, it was a, it was kind of a hobby until it became a, a business. And I was still working a full-time job and couldn't really spend the time on it that I needed to. So quit my job, went full-time as a real estate investor. And then we started buying uh, apartments and started buying um, 36 units and then a 70 unit facility or uh, complex and others around central Indiana because we thought economies of scale would fix this and, and the cash flow would catch up. And, and I'd have that free time that, that Carl had always talked about in real estate. And all they did was really compound my problems. And so, you know, I realized at this point, I didn't want to get out of real estate you know, for all the benefits that real estate has, appreciation, appreciation, you can borrow money to buy it. It's one of the few investments you can do that. And then they move somebody in to pay down your basis. I mean, it's a beautiful business if it just were for the tenants until it's a trash. So as I looked around the landscape, it was either parking lots or self-storage that would, um, you know, get rid of the tenants until it's in trash and you can't really build value in a parking lot. So I started looking to self-storage, bought my first one and um, realized that we have lien laws that protect us instead of eviction laws. And so when somebody doesn't pay, we lock them out and then we sell their stuff off and get paid. And then when they leave, I'm left with a, an empty metal box on a concrete slab. So no drywall, no plumbing to fix, no HVAC. I mean, you know, none of that stuff. It's a metal box on a concrete slab. And so I thought this is, you know, I mean, I've seen the light. So we sold all our houses, sold all our apartment complexes, and then uh, went full bore into self storage. And so that was back in uh, 2005. And to fast forward to today, 48 hours before this event, as uh, Jay mentioned, and we have now surpassed 2 million 100 square feet of self storage. We've got 13,000 units nationwide. And we also, along the way, we created an, an investment and education business as well, where we teach people how to do the business, consult with them. And, and then we partner with a lot of our students on, on our projects. And that's really how we've been able to grow to this, uh, to the place that we are that, and we syndicate, we raise uh, private capital and we're doing five to $11 million class A self storage projects that are now competing uh, with the, the big guys in the markets uh, whose names you would know if I, if I shared those. So that, I think that's the, the, the 122nd version of it, Jake. <laughs> well, that's a fantastic story. And you know, what's amazing. You started doing <laughs> self storage or did you say you started in single family in 2005 or self storage 2005? Storage in 05. I got into single family and the first one I bought was in 1993. Oh, wow. You do go back. Yeah, I, I bought my first single family house for the purpose of flipping and real estate investing back in 2003. Mm -hmm. And folks, I mean, you've got right here, right here on the panel, you've got another fantastic, very successful expert when it comes to raising private capital, mm -hmm. very similarly uh, to how I do. And as he just said, he uses private money, private capital 
for you know funding a lot of his projects, which triggers a question in my mind, Scott. Mm-hmm. I, I would imagine some of your or a good portion of your self storage sellers when you find a property or a self storage existing facility to buy do you find that or have you found that a lot of the sellers uh, will entertain will actually do seller financing and carry a note yeah they, they will more so than when we were in apartments and houses you know with it, on the housing and, and the apartment side most of the times they were backwards they were upside down on their and their equity and, and their, that was the only way they could sell is to offer some seller financing where we found it's just the opposite in storage and that you know, it, it does so well, it performs so well that these owners, they've known, had them for a number of years. They've paid them off, they've paid them down, so they have a very low loan basis. And so therefore, when it comes time to sell, you know what they're faced with, and that is high capital gains taxes. And so unless you've been living under a rock or, or there's really something wrong with you, most people don't like to pay capital gains taxes, including myself. And so for that reason, these folks are offering seller financing on their properties. And um, so if they're not already even talking to us about it, Jay, then obviously we have our, you know, our, our elevator speech as, as to the reasons why they should, because they should, you know, they can defer those taxes and, and obviously uh, get more money for their properties. And so, yeah, we found um, it's even more pertinent and self storage than it was in the other asset classes we were investing in. Excellent. So let's talk now about, so everybody wants to know, I mean, very, you know, very few real estate investors out there really are dialed in on the self storage opportunity. So let's first talk about prior to COVID-19 mm-hmm. and I, I know things are always going to be different, but when we, when we, when we don't have to be virtually all the time. So prior to COVID-19, what are your favorite ways to find the best deals on existing self-storage facilities out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, you know we've had the luxury over several years now since we have had a, a pretty large education and consulting business where we, we do have a lot of folks who bring deals to us to do joint ventures. So, but, but aside from that, it really is. I mean, there, there's 11 approaches that we take to, to finding deals, but my favorite by far is still direct mail. We, we send uh, mailers out, number 10 envelope, hand stamped, hand addressed. The letter's been the same for about the past 10 years with a couple of tweaks here and there. And we get somewhere between a four to 6% response rate on, on average, sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower. Whereas when we were sending them out for houses and apartments, we we're in that two to 3% range. So that that is, um, again, by far the best because it's a uh, before, and no offense to any brokers that may be um, out there or on the line, but a broker is going to um, assess it and, and give them a, a price to either meet where they want to sell or try to get them a little bit more and, and list it uh, for a little bit higher maybe than what it's worth. Whereas we can come in and we can truly get it to, you know, get something under contract that is uh, at, at today's value of that facility and without having to pay fees on the seller side, which means we can negotiate a little bit better price. But that being said, our second best way of finding deals is uh, to partner with our brokers. We have great relationships with a lot of commercial and self-storage brokers that bring us deals because they know that I don't have a license. We don't have anybody on our staff that has a license. And so they're going to get either full commission or a a flat fee that is more than greater than 3% and just a little less than 6%. And they know that we have the ability to transact and close. We put something in a contract, we can perform which means that we don't tie up their client's uh, property and they get their commission paid. We also go out to business brokers because a lot of these mom and pops, when they are looking to sell their facility, they look at their facility as a business instead of commercial real estate. And so they will contact business brokers to sell their business for them. So we scour those websites and have great relationships with those folks as well. And then the fact that I, I speak on the, the, the national level at the industry trade shows, I write articles for the, the trade magazines and my name is out there a number of places. They're able to, and I post in a lot of forums, the different, you know, the, the bigger real estate forums and the names that I'm sure most people know of. I'm all over those places. So when um, they search for self-storage, uh, my name comes up a lot. And so we get a lot of um, opportunities that come our way from, from that standpoint. So it is a shotgun approach to, to finding deals out there, but those are my three favorite. Is self storage uh, is the self storage opportunity and strategy a good strategy for a new real estate investor to consider getting into? I, I, you know, I would say so. I, I mean, most of the folks that we work with, and, and including myself, you know, you said the biggest mistake we ever made in real estate, and, and to me, it was not getting into self storage sooner. You know, we wouldn't have had to pay the you know the licks that we did and the other asset classes and riding the cycles and and, and the valuations where. 
you know, self storage is very solid during a recession as well as during boom times, and we don't have the tenants and the toilets and the trash. I think the one barrier to that, uh, Jay, though, to be honest, is that um, you know, the, the bigger the bigger the piece of commercial real estate, the easier it is truly to to get it funded and to manage it, um, just because you do have economies of scale across the board that makes it easier. So when you're looking at commercial real estate or like self storage, even if you're looking at something that's you know 150, 200, 500 thousand, it may sound like a lot to some folks. Um, that still is somewhat on the small side in terms of being able to manage it. And some people may, may not be able to put that together until you get good at raising private equity like you are, Jay. And so it's a, a, it's a little difficult sometimes to start there. But boy, if you can, or if you could partner with somebody that, that sure beats you know slugging it out in the lower forms of real estate until you get to that place where you have the ability to pull the trigger on something a little larger. Awesome. Final question here for the, for the panel and the audience, uh, Scott, and that is, what would you say is the biggest difference on how you are going about your self-storage investing business today since COVID-19? Mm-hmm. You know, we've had to, we've had to change things a, a little bit, but again, the beauty is one of the beauties of self storage is it's, it's a low labor intensive transaction. Period. You know, we've been using kiosks since 2005, and so we have touchless rentals. Um, they don't have to come in the office if they don't want to. They can rent a unit from their smartphone. We have websites that are mobile friendly and give them the ability to rent a unit from their smartphone. And then when they show up at the facility, they've already paid for it. They've chosen from the, the app, the, uh, the map of the facility, the unit that they want. They get a gate code to come in once they've paid. And uh, they either bring their own lock or several, several of our facilities. And it has a key fob um, or a code on the door to be able to get into the site. So the, the facilities that we weren't, that weren't completely able to be touchless, um, we've converted those over and uh, we've reduced our manager's hours by just a touch. I mean, it, it took a long time before we even did that. I mean, we've only reduced our payroll by a, a few hours um, across our entire portfolio on a, on a few facilities. But since then, it's, it's really just a matter of making sure that people knew that we were open and that also our existing tenants, that they weren't afforded some of those luxuries like tenants in apartments and houses where they didn't have to make their payments and be evicted. You know, we, we, they still have to pay for self-storage because it, uh, it is an essential business. And if they want their stuff, they still have to pay. We're not, we're not sending anybody out with uh, auctions at this time. We are being cognizant of that. Uh, but the good news is, is our accounts receivable hasn't taken a hit either because of the nature of our business. People need their stuff and they know that we have the right to sell it if they're, if they're behind. So it's really just educating our folks and letting the rest of the public know that need storage during this time as businesses were shutting down and people were moving home and they were having to clean out their house to create an office that we were open for business. So we've been moving along at a really good clip. And, and once again, we know self-storage does extremely well during a recession. We, we are the asset class that shines during a recession. That is great to know. And Scott, thank you for uh, coming here on the panel panel and sharing the information. Now, uh, we're going to put your website back up here one more time here at uh, www.selfstorageinvesting.com. So everybody that's watching right now here on the uh, virtual event, make a note, write that down right now, selfstorageinvesting.com. And Scott, have you got some free training or reports uh, at that website for the folks? We do, you know, because of uh, everybody's looking at self-storage during a recession because they've seen all the articles and, and how well we're doing. Obviously, our, our, our website's doing extremely well. And so uh, what we've got to, to keep people from making mistakes is we, we've got a PDF. Um, it, it's an ebook on the seven mistakes that new self-storage investors make and how to avoid them. So we want to make sure that people don't blow off half-cocked and making mistakes as they rush into self-storage right now. And so it's a little tool to uh, keep them on the, on the straight and narrow. That's wonderful. So there you have it, folks. Get on over uh, right after the virtual event, you know, uh, to selfstorageinvesting.com and uh, take advantage of Scott's very nice offer there on the free report. So, Scott, again, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you coming on. My pleasure, Jay. Well, as you know, I help real estate investors raise a lot of private money for their real estate deals. You may not know that I have an exclusive Private Money Academy membership. That's right. A monthly membership where we actually spend time together twice a month on Zoom. That's the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month. And I invite you to come check it out. We have hundreds and hundreds of members that always share their deals with each other, how they're finding deals, and of course, how we get all of our deals funded. I want to give you a four week trial to just come check it out. Absolutely free. And you can do that in the description below. 
go check out the URL, the website below right here in the description. And I'll see you at the Private Money Academy membership. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.